I'm here today with Chantel Tron. We're going to talk about her uh, documentary she did, Cajun Creole Black and White, and uh, how she came to be involved in that or had the idea what she wanted to do with it. And we also have Jared Guillory here, who's cooked some stuff. It's killing me sitting here smelling it right now. It is. <laughs> and we were talking to Jared in a little while as well. But anyway, Chantel, how you doing? Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. No problem. You want to tell us a bit about your documentary? Sure. It's called Cajun and Creole Black and White. And we actually started production on this uh, documentary back in 2013. And the concept was... I wanted to get the two leading men in my life, my father and my husband, my dad being a Creole, and my husband being 40 years younger, Horace Trahan. Uh, I wanted to get their stories. They're both musicians, and dad's been playing music for over 50 years. He started in 19, in the 50s and 60s with his own band. It was rock and roll then. And of course, um, Horace Trahan, my husband, started his own band uh, when he was about 18. Mm -hmm. So, come to find out, they both grew up in Austin, was considered Austin, Louisiana now. Lafayette Parish, but Austin, and within two miles of each other. So here you have an older Creole black man, a younger white Cajun white man. I was going to call it from the cotton fields to the bandstand, mm -hmm. but Horace wouldn't have been able to relate to that. So, <laughs> we didn't do that. But long well, story short, sitting out in the field. <laughs> well, I'm gonna do that. That's, that's a good idea, right? I might have to do that sometimes. But no, I just seeing them on the bandstand together, gracing the stages as they have uh, for the last eight years together mm -hmm. with the band Horace Strong on the Austin Express. I wanted to take their stories um, and how they got there yeah. and how, growing up right down the street from one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And what did Mr. Rodney think about all this? Well, he's old school, and he, he loves it. In all honesty, that's another reason we did this. When Horace and Dad start talking, you'd swear that um, they're in another world. Mm -hmm. It's it's a musician thing. It's a, a, a cultural thing. Yeah. And they just go, they roll. So Horace had bought me a little camera, a little bitty pink Kodak thing, and I thought I was doing something, a tripod. It didn't capture what I was looking for. Yeah. So we started hiring people and uh, a videographer, a cinematographer, and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. we, we captured a lot of it. A lot of it didn't make it to the DVD, um, but we still have footage that we'll probably do more with it later. Mm -hmm. We'll give us some dirt on Horace. What didn't make it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny because we tried to actually loosen my dad up. Mm -hmm. And so we got him drinking some Crown. Mm -hmm. But Horace is the one who started feeling the Crown a little bit more. And so he started talking and, you know, his truth. And it was actually, yeah. it was entertaining, but it was also a lot of... Uh, Things we didn't know, and and nowadays mm -hmm. you do have to know where you come where you come from to know where you're going. Yeah. So, and that's another thing. This is a learning DVD. Uh, it's educational. Mm -hmm. Very wow. educational. And y'all have it distributed through anybody or anybody picked no, it up yet? No, no, we're doing it ourselves, and it's on the website www.horrorstrongle.com. And so, um, we're just doing it ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we, it's getting a good buzz. It had been a long time coming. As I said, we started it back in uh, 2013. Yeah. So it finally made it out, and people are loving it. We were at the Cinema on the Bayou Festival in mm -hmm. Lafayette, and it won an award for Best Audience Award, and um, just got a really good response, a, a number of emotions, laughter, yeah. tears. Um, it, it's entertaining and very mm -hmm. educational. I watched it. I really enjoyed it. I really did. Thank you. Uh, especially some of the... Uh, the segments with uh, Mr. Rodney talking about you know, the history <laughs> yes. of, of everything. Yes. So, I mean, did you just come up with this idea to do it from just listening to them talk? Or? Yes, because there were stories that dated back uh, when Horace and um, my dad started talking um, that dated back to Clifton Chenier. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, um, as we all know, Clifton Chenier is considered the king of Zodico, and that he is. He made uh, Zodico known worldwide and accepted and loved. And at one time, Clifton Chenier even borrowed my dad's trailer, his band trailer, hmm. to go on a gig. And we do have a picture of that. So um, dad just, you know, it, it dated way back 
And so you hear these stories, these house dances, how they made their own beer, their own wine. Um, he said you'd hear the, the bottles popping underneath the beds whenever that yeast would rise. Yeah. So all of these things that didn't make it on the film, um, it's just when I heard them talking, I said, we have to capture this. Mm -hmm. And we take for granted that this is your dad or your grandparents talking. And you don't know. You and I are not promised tomorrow. Yeah. So we can sit here and say, my grandfather said this, my dad, my mom said that, but you need to document it and yeah. pass it down. You know, mm -hmm. that's how the culture will stay alive. Yeah. And the show is kind of live in the middle of Karen Grove somewhat. So you'll hear dogs barking in the background and you'll hear it's motorcycles passing. That, that, that old man line. <laughs> <laughs> You understand? We can make that too. We, I need to get the recipe for that. Don't get me started. Yeah, that's our next cooking show. We'll make okay. Wine. That sounds good. That sounds good. Yeah. But it's part of the culture. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Dogs barking. Wine, that's right. Good times. Good time. Let the good times roll. Yeah. So y'all haven't taken us to any other film festivals or? No, it just came out. Actually, um, we just got it pressed up this year, uh, probably in February of mm -hmm. 2019. Yeah. Yep. So it's it's still new. Yeah. It's still new, just coming out. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it won't be long because, um, like I said, it's getting a lot of attention, um, and, and yeah. I know it'll be picked up. And you have to see it. I, I watched it. Actually, I watched it twice. Um, <laughs> and it, it's really good. It gives you insight into the area, like I said, the history. I, I was actually wanting it to be longer. When it yes, ended. everybody's like, saying that, and we actually yeah. made it. It's forty-one minutes, mm -hmm. and so we were thinking um, LPB or PBS, um, because with the commercials, you're looking at an hour long documentary. Yeah. So we're actually shopping it right now in New Orleans um, for that. And I, th I think it's very likely to be picked up. Well, I saw Herman is on here, Fuselay. Yeah. Yes. Herman couldn't get y'all hooked? Come on, Herman. <laughs> I mean, really? I'm sure he could. And um, right now he's with the office, Opelousa's Office of Tourism. So mm -hmm. yeah, Herman is doing big things. and. We're so grateful to him and his wife, Beth. He really keeps the culture rolling, yeah. uh, as along with so many others. But, yes, he did um, do a lot of commentary on it mm -hmm. and very knowledgeable yeah. on, on the music side of things. So I have to ask you this. I threw your husband under the bus when he was on. <laughs> I asked him what his favorite Louisiana dish was. Wow. And I, I, I did... Full warning before he answered that. It better be something his wife cooks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. he did good. He did, he did right by me with that. I have to say seafood. So any type of seafood. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like boiled crawfish. I like boiled crabs. I like crawfish etouffee. So to sum it up, a seafood platter. Wow. You can't go wrong with a seafood platter. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you like that better than what Jared cooks? Oh, no. <laughs> now, listen. Jared had the shrimp rolling with the corn. From listen, when someone is cooking in the first five minutes, you smell it, it's on. Yeah. Jared, it, it, delicious, delicious. Mm -hmm. I need that recipe. True, true story. <laughs> Stop playing. <laughs> now, do y'all carry these to any of Horace's gigs? And, uh, oh, Horace yes. Express and oh, yes. And you can get them, like I said, on the website, mm -hmm. um, Horace .com. Everywhere Horace is playing, uh, you can also see the gigs on his Facebook page. Yeah. And we have them. We mm -hmm. have the documentaries available. And so when you go to the gigs, we um, they're $20 at the gigs. Mm -hmm. So on the website, it's a little more. We're probably going to run specials here and there because we just want you to experience the, the knowledge, the wisdom, yeah. the education. We never did do this for money. But in doing things that you love, it's nice if you can get paid and also make a living because yeah. I'd like to broaden the documentary side of yeah. things with the culture to more educational things and... Um, to help the community and help yeah. individuals. I love um, motivating people and encouraging people to be their best, to live Absolutely. their best life. So when you can incorporate the culture with that and get paid, if you yeah. can, it, it, it's a win-win situation for everyone. Oh, and speaking of getting paid, if you like what we do on the show. <laughs> yes. Uh, go on over to Patreon. You'll go to patreon.com forward slash L-A-E-N-T-X. Sign up and become a member if you're a paying member you get a free t-shirt and then you'll get some behind the scenes footage of uh stuff that happens around here that we don't put in a normal show you can go to our website laentx.com you can check out episodes there you can go to our youtube channels we have a couple of them and we have a facebook page louisiana entertainment experience um we'll put a lot of show notes and things on the facebook page 
links to other uh, events and those type of things as things come up with the people who are on the show, uh, whether it be groups or artists or whatnot. We uh, put promotional events and stuff out there. We we uh, share them onto our Facebook page. So And because of the love of the show, once Horace and I were exposed and love what you're doing so much thank in you. honor of that, and, and I know it's growing already, and thank you for giving us an outlet to even come on your show. I'm going to give you some of these documentaries to give away in your package deal. Sweet. So we're going to involve the community, educate the community, and let them be a part of this. Well, I had one member that signed up, and she asked me if I had Horace's disc or whatnot. She had hit me up and was like, well, can you give me one of his discs? Well, we're going to do that. On and behalf. I said, well, I have one he gave me, and I'm not letting go of it. Well, hey, but let's do it. It's a great disc. It really is. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. you. Know? Thank and you. I enjoy y'all coming. You know, Thank and the whole you. show is about Louisiana town. Yes. And culture and history. Uh, Corey Ritchie and I started the whole process. Corey couldn't be here, so you know, he's out doing some other things right now. Right. But uh, it, it was an idea we had to you know, showcase the talent because we're loaded with so much talent. Oh, yes. State, yes. Whether it be cooking or entertaining in any type of form. Yes. And cooking, we always say, is a part of entertaining, and always. music is a universal language. That's exactly no right. where you're at. The perfect so, ingredients, yes. You know, but anyway, y'all look for the disc and y'all check out the site again, patreon.com forward slash L A E N T X. Look for us on Facebook, Louisiana Entertainment Experience, and look for us on YouTube as well. Uh, we're on Pinterest, Twitch, uh, you name it, we're out there. But check it out. Go to one of Horses Gigs, pick up the disc, and come back and visit us again. Y'all sit tight, we'll be right back. <laughs> Is that a Jared special you make it then? No, that that that's a that's a way to saute the, the shrimp butter. Mmm. It smells good. Yeah. Mm. Everything starts with your basic uh you know your old you you your, your trinity, you know, your, yeah. your uh, bell pepper, onion and celery mm -hmm. cut down. And you're gonna saute that and then my cardiologist is not going to be happy with me. But the butter's the only thing bad in there, so you got to really scoop up the butter bad. out. Really not bad. None of this stuff is bad for you. And we, we kind of cut the butter down a little bit. That's how you keep it. Mm -hmm. Because of that, that water being so different. Yeah. Oh, we never made that one. Well, Can you give us a little more background about you personally and where you're from, how you grew up? Sure. So I grew up in Lafayette, Louisiana, on the north side of town, close um, sorry, to the Burr Bridge Highway. No, and um, went to St. Genevieve Catholic School in elementary, Turlings Catholic High, North Side Wait, High for Turlings? a minute. Went to Turlings, oh, yes. I have a Turlings alumni in the next room. That's oh, fine. yes. That's the yeah. mighty rebels. I mean, and those. If you went to North Side, my aunt was the business teacher for like 400 years. Really? Oh, what Ms. was Miss Jones? Jones? Sounds familiar. It's been a long time. But <laughs> No, I'm, I'm sure I knew her. So I graduated in 1989, but I went to Northside for about six months. Mm -hmm. And then I actually graduated uh, from Karen Crow. I had to go my junior and senior year yeah. when my parents split. But um, long story short, right out of high school, I joined the United States Air Force. I was a medical service specialist for five years active duty. And my service, um, years in the service, only took me to Texas. I did my basic training in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. um, and then my technical training to be a medical service specialist was in Wichita Falls, mm -hmm. um, Texas. And then I got stationed in San Antonio again. And then I asked for a transfer to Borksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana. So Bossier City, Louisiana. Yeah. So Texas and Louisiana, but it was wonderful. Um, Wonderful experience yeah. for someone right out of high school. So that's where you got your get up and go. And your oh, from. yes. But we were disciplined very well at home. My mother was a disciplinarian. Uh, I come from a Creole family. Mm -hmm. um, 
Catholic background, hardworking parents. So we were, the discipline was there. As a matter of fact, we had to um, do our beds in hospital corners in the Air Force, which is a perfect triangle tuck oh. to where you can bounce a quarter on your sheets. Yeah. My mother, had, that was the norm at our house. So I was prepared. So, yeah. yeah. So anyway. Nothing new, but yeah. it was wonderful. You, I became independent, yeah. and um, after living such a sheltered life with good parents, um, you learn to fend for yourself in the real world. Yeah. So, after the Air Force, um, being in Bossier City, it's right next to Shreveport. So, I be, I went into radio. Mm -hmm. I started doing voiceovers for AB Advertising Agency. And so the radio station was KMJJ FM. It was like a hip hop R and B station. And I started hosting the morning show with another girl from Lafayette. We did the Sugar and Spice morning show. I was oh. Sugar, she was Spice. <laughs> so that led me to meet a lot of celebrities. Um, and then I became affiliated with it's Showtime at the Apollo. Oh, wow. So I moved to New York for two years, met Steve Harvey, um, got a lot of experience in the entertainment business. And um, from there, after 9-11, I decided I was doing well and making, you know, major moves. But I think I was chasing the dream a little too hard. And mm -hmm. I realized what was important after 9-11. So I came back home in 2001. Yeah. And so, but that was always in me, entertainment. But my dad kind of shunned us. We were four girls and one boy. Mm -hmm. He shunned his girls from getting into that business. So, but like Prego, it was in there. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I married a musician, a very talented man, Horace Strong, mm -hmm. and then uh, now I'm able to still do the entertainment thing with the documentary Cajun and Creole, Black and White, mm -hmm. which I plan on doing more, and still able to um, help Horace yeah. with Horace Strong on the Austin Express, manage the band. My dad's in the band. My brother's mm -hmm. in the band, and now it's a family affair and doing what I love, yeah. and still being able to do entertainment. Your brother plays the drums. Shane, yeah. Shane Bernard plays drums. Mm -hmm. He's the one who introduced me to Horace. So, oh, yeah, wow. yeah. You didn't meet him banging on the bass drum <laughs> at the Andrew Hospital? No, no. So Shane played drums for Horace, and um, yeah. I guess after he was out of his relationship, um, a five-year relationship, and he asked Shane, "Hey, what's your sister doing these days?" So Shane said, "Which one? I have four. <laughs> so, um, well, sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he said the one that was in the military. So, and the rest is history. I met Horace, and you know how girls. I'm a daddy's girl, so mm -hmm. you seem to want to a man that's similar to your dad. And being that musician and a hardworking man, yeah. it just we clicked. And and I understand that that language, entertainment, music, universal language, like you said. Yeah. So yeah. outside of keeping Horace straight, <laughs> and else two children. Yes. What do you like to do? Well, we have a lawn service. Horace and I have Cajun and Creole Lawn Service, LLC. And uh, it's called Cajun Creole Lawn Service. And we've been doing that for years. And that's another thing I learned as a child. Um, neatness, you know, uh, taking care of your things. And I love working with nature. There's something therapeutic about the soil and nature and yeah. trees and flowers. So we do that. I love that. It's hard work, but it is, it, like I said, it's therapeutic, yeah. you know, and um, once you see the fruits of your labor and the outcome and how it affects your customers and you can beautify their yard or give it a little TLC and they're like, oh my God, it's just rewarding in that way when you mm -hmm. can see, you know, how you can touch people in, in the way of service in that way. That's awesome. So, but my best, and I can talk so yeah. much, <laughs> my best uh, achievement in life is being a mother. There's no award that I could get or um, that beats being a mom. That is the most rewarding title. It's being a mom. That's awesome. Being a mom. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. you see that those little ones are examples of what anything you put into them, that they can be anything. So you try to just put the right things and, and watch it grow. Yeah. Yeah. And a good little, <laughs> I'm not playing with you. <laughs> Medea, come on, I got a bag of belts. <laughs> no, but it's, it's rewarding. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. So what's Horace like to eat for breakfast? 
Well, these days, because we've been doing the lawn service, we're having to try to eat healthier because you need endurance in the heat and South Louisiana weather. Okay. Heat indexes can get up to 110 and above in July and August. So Horace will do blueberries, uh, arugula, uh, a salad, boiled eggs, two boiled eggs, um, turmeric. So pretty healthy yeah. breakfast, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm about to mess up your diet. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not hard to do. Uh, true story. I, yeah. I mean, I've been married to Horace nine years. We got married in 2010, so I put on about 40 pounds. So we don't eat that healthy. But mm -hmm. for breakfast, we're trying, yeah. you know, and we've incorporated apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. and just trying to get healthier. We quit smoking mm -hmm. a year ago. That's good. So after 27 years for me, yeah. that was a big big plus for both of us. So what's your favorite song on Until the End? Until the End. Mm, I like Horace's Mardi Gras. I, I just mm -hmm. do. And because it's a feel-good song, it's original. He says you can uh, do Mardi Gras in the city or in the country, mm -hmm. and that's what it's all about down here. You know, mm -hmm. we, we just... You don't we, chase the chickens from Mardi Gras? No. As a matter of fact, I just learned about that. I always saw what did mm -hmm. Courier de Mardi Gras? I always saw it on TV. I didn't really know what it was about, but um, I think it's so neat. Our culture yeah. is second to none, you know? Awesome. Who would have thought, you know? But that was it was real. They were trying to make a gumbo, correct? Yeah. So yeah. it's we keep it real down here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, is there any shout-outs you want to give it now? Well, of course, the Horace. And um, thanks for your talent and sharing your music with the world and with our family and to our kids, Kanan and Leah, and my entire family, mom and pop, uh, all of our siblings. I will go on forever, but uh, and my siblings, the Bernard and Chuanhol families. Mm -hmm. And to you, thank you. Oh, you this has thank been a you. wonderful interview, and I never... And I can't stop watching your shows because it's very That's informative. Great. And to be right here in, in Lafayette... I love it. Well, good. We have to come back and bring the kids next time. That sounds great. Let them rip and roar. Maybe get Jared to cook <laughs> something else. Yes. I'll tell you what, next time we'll have, we'll, have, we'll have Horace come back and cook. Oh, hey. Give him a black <laughs> pot and he will roll. Yes. Oh, yeah. You're going to start it. something. <laughs> well, y'all, it's been great hanging out here with Chantel and learning more about the Troll Hall clan <laughs> and, uh, and uh, Mr. Rodney and the Bernard clan and whatnot. Y'all stay tuned to the show, and y'all just hang out like a hair in a biscuit. I'm talking with Jared Gillery, Jared Gillery, in a little bit. I'm smelling that food; it's got me off. Mm, me too. Anyway, <laughs>
We did it. Well, we're going to bring you back again and again and again. Jared's going to host some shows for us. We're going to, I'm we're really gonna, looking forward to that. We're going to really. involve Jared. And uh, it's been a great time with Jared around. His cook, I'm still smelling what he cooked earlier. Yeah. Well, well, let's let's talk about the dish since that's what we're here for. And, and, and the quicker we yes. get this done, you can you can go eat. Yes. Um, what I did, and in the pictures you see, just simply took some some. Everything starts with the same thing, you know. Mm -hmm. you, you you chopped up onions, bell peppers, the the, the Trinity as we yeah. call it here, and uh, we sauteed that down. Mm -hmm. Then we uh, took fresh sausage. I I like the jalapeno one. Yeah. Out the casing, we browned. Uh, we browned it. Yeah. Just simply browned it. When it's almost finished, in the, in the final stages of browning, right after you drain it off, you know you get some grease out. You drain it off. Throw in some fajita seasoning. Ooh. Mix that in. In that last quarter, three quarters, just simply saute some shrimp in butter. Hmm. Once you your shrimp saute, combine the two. Kind of, kind of hold back on some of the butter because you don't want to introduce too much yeah. grease back into the meat. But put the shrimp in with the meat, and then mix it down. Okay. It's great. On and then I we did some corn on the side. Yeah, it's great. Just it in a bowl with some corn, or you can serve it over rice, potatoes, or pasta. Mm. And it just has that taste and feeling like you slaved. Yeah. In the kitchen for hours to impress somebody, and it's really a 15 minute. Well, I didn't see anybody put their plate down. Right? Yeah, that's a good sign, and you can tell I don't put mine down much. And uh, I've learned to cook that way. I actually learned to cook that way in college because I got tired of eating McDonald's, so my mom said, I'm going to teach you how to cook a bunch of things that you cook, cook in 15 minutes. Yeah. And the, the the end result does not feel like a 15 minute dish. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's you can impress somebody. You know, baby, I cooked all day for you. You know, I'm special. Are oh, you special? <laughs> Ten minutes and two hot pots and we're good. Oh, that's it. Uh, mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. So since you came last time, you had any shows coming up? Oh, we actually did that big show that we um we did in Morgan City. Myself, yeah. Uncle Luck, and just Chris went well, very well. Had a real good time. Blast. Uh, we have some more stuff coming up. I'm going to be heading out to North Louisiana for a little while. We got a couple out there. Other than that, just trying to keep rolling. Yeah, cool. So, what's the next dish? The next dish? Uh, I probably shouldn't because my mom's going to kill me, but we may need to do my mom's A2 Well, you were supposed to do that this time. I got scared. Wow. Yeah, yeah, okay, I told you the story about her hitting me with a car. Yeah. You know, it's not going to stop. My mama has a theory. As long as she's alive, mm -hmm. she can kill me. Oh. And she truly believes that they're not going to do anything. <laughs> you know, a long time ago, Marvin Gaye's dad shot him and, and got out. Yeah. That's the worst thing could ever happen yeah. to me. Because my mom believes that she can kill me and it'll be okay. She brought you in, she can take you take, That's it. She brought me in, she'll take me out. <laughs> and, you know... I don't know if she will or not, but she has convinced me she will, so I'm done. That's can't, it. Can't do it. That's it. We got to take mama serious. You know, yeah. So she is going on a cruise, so we'll just air that episode when she's out of the country. Oh, there you go. That's why we'll sneak it in. Just sneak it in. We'll sneak it, sneak right it in. <laughs> Tell us about Creole Magazine. Uh, Creole Magazine is, is, is an awesome piece of literature. It's out of London, England, and they're starting to kind of combine the European Creole and Louisiana Creole cultures together. And they're doing a lot of real interesting things with it. And um, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm, I'm kind of slipping because when I came in and met Miss Chantel and Mr. Horace, I uh, invited Mr. Horace to be involved and in, in, in I was going to recommend to the editing the interview Horace and then Miss Chantel told me he actually was in the last episode. So I'm, I'm yeah. behind. So he's yeah. actually featured in the current episode. You got to catch up. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's it's my phone. Smart, I'm slipping. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not doing my job. <laughs> oh, um, uh, uh, Creole, yeah, ignore that. I'm, I'm on the ball, but on, on the ball. On the top, he's on of, top of it. He's got mm -hmm. you covered. And um, actually... Again, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this experience. Um, I've had a couple of entertainers out my way express interest in being involved with the Absolutely. Louisiana entertainment experience. Yeah. Let's get them all going. We can get it right here. And I'll tell you right now, let me throw this out there. I am planning on doing a Louisiana entertainment show uh, somewhere. I'm talking to a couple of different guys at different venues around the area. And what I'll do is after we get a few more episodes on our belt and get some people picked is I want to do a, a, a combined show with 
comedians and musicians. Uh, and there's some other people that have come on the show that have artwork. And we'll put the artwork on display That'd be a good at, thing. at the show. Very good deal. Uh, can, I, can, 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 can I host? Don't come in. That's what I do. Uh, are you a member on Patreon yet? Yes. <laughs> I'm not a real honest guy, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> No, I actually, I am a, I did subscribe. Okay, okay, all right. Maybe we'll, okay. we'll think about it. All right. I'll tell me what we Amy, subscribe. <laughs> cool. <laughs> well, y'all, we had a great time hanging out with Horace and Chantel today and with Jerry Guillory. Yeah, they always. were really, really a good time. Oh, I love those guys. Mm -hmm. I really do. Down to earth people. I love being, hanging out with them, chatting. But anyway, we're going to wrap this one up. Till next time, y'all give a hoot and a holler to a coot and a collar. Y'all take it easy.